So I'm coming more from a provider uh, and families make a community with a family, with the whole community, children can be very successful. So thank you. As Pete shared, we, we are very successful with test scores in the Jefferson School District, and I am very proud of that. Um, but we really focus on the whole child. It's not all about test scores. Test scores are important, but, but we want a well-rounded child and, and a child that's going to go on and be successful. The, the, the most important component to having high achievement, both for, for behavior and academics, because both pieces are equally important to me, is setting high expectations. And as a district, we do that. We set very high expectations. And, and as a trustee, as an administrator, as a, a teacher, and as a parent, my experience is if you set high expectations for children, they're going to live up to those. They, they want to please you, and, and, and you work with that. So, so we do that. Um, we provide a, a, the current up-to-date standards-based curriculum that, that's a big focus in our district and, and we, we uh, budget our resources so that we can always provide that. We provide enrichment programs because we do want a well-rounded child. We have sports programs and drama programs and, and uh, music programs, those sorts of things, so that those, those are well-rounded children. And if you hook a child in with something that they believe in, something that ties them to school, they do better academically. So if basketball is their thing, that translates to, to higher academic achievement. Um, children who are struggling, we then go on and provide interventions. We have support providers with bachelor's degrees who are paraprofessionals during the day providing intervention. We provide after school intervention programs. And um, we train the best and the brightest teachers that we can find. And, and we empower our, our site administration and our district administration to keep the world out of that classroom. Whatever nonsense is going on in the world, we try to keep it out of there so teachers can do what they're good at, which is teach. And it translates to high academic achievement in our district, and I'm proud of that. Thank you, Debbie. I um, just want to jump in real fast because I know there's a lot of questions up here and what I want to do is ask one more question that we'll give you a two minute response to and then the following question that we'll do, we'll start doing some one minute responses. If that's okay with you folks because as an audience member we want to keep it going. We want to get as many <coughs> questions to you. Okay. okay. What is your plan to lower the dropout rate and to increase the number of students going to college? for the Tracy Unified School District. Start here again. Well, I, I'm not sure if I have a specific plan for that. I mean, it's a whole package of trying to keep kids engaged in high school, which isn't easy. And I think one of the best ways that we're doing it is keeping um, the plans for Kimball moving forward with them when there was some push not to. The size of our high schools are currently just too big. At 3,200 and approximately 2,700 kids at each, it's hard to keep all the kids engaged all the time in high school because it's just too big of an environment. Having the third high school open will certainly help that. All three of our high schools will be smaller. Teachers will have more time with students. Students will feel more part of the high school. And hopefully we'll stay in and see that there's opportunities in life. There's not many opportunities in life without a high school degree. And trying to get that message to some kids who when all they see is what's in front of them at the moment, is not an easy thing to do for a parent or a teacher or an administrator. But I think the biggest thing that we're going to do, outside of the curriculum opportunities that we give them, I think Tom was outlining some of them at Kimball, where they're going to get opportunities for vocational also, is to keep them engaged and to make them feel like they're part of not just the community, but the community in their high school, so that they want to get that four-year degree and move on. Uh, I, I think that uh, Measure E is a step in the right direction. It's providing uh, facilities that are clean and new and the, the students can uh, achieve their potential. I think that what you have to do is you have to go out there and try and understand what children are looking at, what engages them, why do they not want to attend school, and then change the way you think so that they do want to attend school. Thank you. To decrease the dropout rate, a couple of things that we're curr currently doing already, we have something called Cyber High. Cyber High enables students to take classes online. That's something that we're offering currently in the school district. And as we all know, well, people who have attended college, 
colleges now offered online. And some, some kids do better with online. So some kids who may not want to go to a classroom, if they have this option of cyber high, this can prevent them from totally dropping out of high school. Another thing we're doing, we have SAR. This is the Student Attendance Review Board. This is a board that's, that was formed to help correct truancy. So if a student has so many absences, they're going to be referred to the SAR board. And the SAR board is going to call them in, their entire family, and see what things we can do and what interventions we can put in place immediately to make sure these, this kid comes to school. Because many times, it's a, it could be a family issue that's going on. So one thing that we've done through the SAR board is show compassion for our families here in Tracy. Go out to the homes with the SARB officer. We, we, pay, we pay that person to reach out to the community and do outreach to these families to make sure that we are getting these kids into school. And just piggybacking on what, on what Kelly said, opening up the new John Kimball High School, that's going to help us reduce the population at the current high schools, and it is going to provide opportunities for kids to, to participate in career tech. And we are going to have a construction management program over there. And I know many kids will strive to do that, you know, because that's something that they can achieve and go right into the workforce. Thank you. I think it takes engagement with, between the faculty, teachers, and the family have to get involved to, to really turn that around in um, specific cases. Um, I do think we could do a better job in addressing the needs of uh, learning disabilities. I have a son with a learning disability and, and was a very talented teacher at uh, a Tracy Public School that recognized it and we were able to get help outside the school district. I, I'd like to see more help within the school district. Uh, we were able to do that. Uh, it wasn't easy and it wasn't cheap and it was something that the family had to sacrifice to do, but we did it. I can't help but think that there are families out there who don't have the resources or aren't able to make the sacrifice to do what we had to do. And um, I would like to see more help in that regards. I do realize that the dropout rate at Tracy uh, is higher than it should be, but in comparison with school districts like Stockton Unified, it's a great, uh, it's a great system. And one of the reasons for it being, being better lately, uh, as Kelly and, and uh, he, he said that the new Kimball High is going to make it easier because there will be smaller uh, populations at each of our three high schools. But we got to remember there's more than three high schools. We probably have five high schools here. We have Stein and Millennium. And the reason for these schools is that there are a lot of students who can't succeed in a regular high school. And these other two schools do make it available, uh, an available good program for them. And they succeed in these schools. And the more that we can do this, uh, make alternatives to these students, uh, the less dropouts we're going to have. I'm going to approach his answer a little bit differently. I was the director of adult education, career tech ed, and independent studies. The students I dealt with were usually at risk. Many of the students that we received at, through adult ed weren't successful in the K-12 system to receive their comprehensive high school diploma. When they came upon our doorstep, one of the things that I approached those students with is that you can succeed. And one of the little methodologies that I used with them was to say, what is your last name? And they would expound that last name. And I said, no, wait a minute. Now you have two last names because you have a mom and you have a dad. Now what does that name truly mean to you and where did that name come from? And the students many times would not know what that meant. And then I said, okay, and where did it come from? I said, now where are you going to take your name? And what are you going to leave your little ones what kind of legacy are you going to leave them? Invest in an education. Explore and go forward. We would graduate anywhere from 50 to 100 students per annum. We carried about 1,300 students by semester, about 500 students were high school students making up courses that they weren't able to pass previously. And that happened on a nightly basis in Tracy, uh, Tracy Adult School. So. 
there is another avenue 